Sir, uh, my question is about how close do you think we are to the Antichrist coming on the scene? Okay, do we... Gary, can you can are are you asking if if uh, if the Antichrist may be alive today? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, we could go that route on that question. I believe. Uh, I'm just okay. curious uh, how close you think we are to him coming on the scene and taking power. Okay, well, so that's a great question, a very interesting question. Um, number one, let's answer this question. Could it be possible that the Antichrist is alive today? I would definitely say yes, it's very possible. Um, as we look at the signs of the times, we look at our world, we see where every, how everything's going, it appears that what we're seeing in our world on, on every front and every side, um, I believe what we're seeing is the setup um, for the things that are going to happen during the tribulation period, okay? Now, of course, the tribulation period comes after the rapture, okay? Um, I, I believe the Bible teaches a pre-tribulational rapture, which means Jesus is going to come in the clouds of the air, and he is going to raise the dead believers, and then those believers who are alive on the earth at the time Jesus raises the dead believers will be caught up with them. That's where we get the word rapture. Uh, in the Greek harpazo, we find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm sorry, not 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and on. And so that's going to happen. Jesus is going to remove his church from the earth. And we also read about that um, in type um, and in prophecy in Revelation chapter 4, where John, after the church age, we see that John then is caught up into heaven, and all of a sudden he's in the presence of God along with the redeemed people of God. And so that is all what has that has to transpire before the tribulation period. Now, when the tribulation begins, if you move forward in the book of Revelation to chapter six, when Jesus opens the first seal judgment, those seal judgments are the first set of three sets of judgments. Each, there are seven judgments in each set. The seal judgments are the first of those three sets of judgments that are going to occur during the tribulation period. It looks as if the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments happened in the first half of the tribulation toward, and, and toward the middle, and then the, the bold judgments happen in the second half of the tribulation. What's interesting, when Jesus opens that first seal, Revelation chapter 6 and verse two, 1 and 2, what you see is you see a man on a white horse coming forward, and as he does, what he's doing is he, he's on a white horse. He has a bow, and he has no arrow, means he, he comes in peace, but it also says that he comes conquering and to conquer. And so that is the Antichrist. That is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes at the end of the tribulation period in Revelation 19 on a white horse and comes and defeats the Antichrist. So the Antichrist will come into the world. When he comes, he will come as a man of peace. According to Daniel 9, 27, he's going to make a, a, he's going to make a covenant or a peace treaty with the nation of Israel and with those around her. And that will probably include the rebuilding of the Jewish temple. And so what we see then is he brings a he's a false Christ who brings a false peace, but then during the middle of the tribulation period, according to Daniel chapter 9, according to Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, at the halfway point of the tribulation period, he's going to break his covenant with Israel. He's going to demand the sacrifices in the temple and all the Jewish worship of, of Yahweh to stop. And then he's going to persecute the Jewish people and set himself up as God. You can read about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He sets an image of himself up and sets himself up as God to be worshipped by the Jews and the rest of the world. And then we read in Revelation 13, all of those people um, then who refuse to worship the image of his name and to take the mark that he's going to give for people to be able to buy and sell, that what's going to happen then is he's going to have those people killed. And so that's what the Antichrist is going to do. But when you read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul tells us, though, 
that that day, the day of the Lord, the tribulation is not going to come until after there's a falling away, there's an apostasy, and then the son of the son of perdition, the son of destruction, the man of sin, which is the Antichrist, then he will be revealed. Okay, and that's going to happen during the tribulation period. So, Gary, here's here's I said all that to say this: there's a lot that has to happen, but there's a lot happening now. Uh, when when we look at when we look at things like globalism, when we look at the push for a one world order and a global government, we see the push for a one world currency, because what the Antichrist is going to usher in to the whole world is going to be a one world government, a one world economy, and a one world religion, and we're seeing all those things through technology. And through globalism, we're starting to see those things come together now to where it is possible for it to happen. So I'm, I'm saying this, Gary, that if we see those signs that Jesus gave in Matthew 24 about what's going to happen in the tribulation, if we're seeing things now that will be able to set that up during the tribulation, and we're seeing everything being set up for the Antichrist to be able to do what he's going to do, that tells us the tribulation can't be that far. Now, we, we, can't, we can't set dates. We can't even say how many years it's going to be. But the more we see a global govern, a push for a global, global government, uh, nations giving up their sovereignty over to the UN or, or something like that, and then a one-world economy where we're all under the digital currency and all that sort of thing, um, when we start seeing that, then we know things are being set up for the Antichrist, and the tribulation cannot be that far off. And here's the thing, Gary, if the tribulation is not that far off, that means the rapture is even closer because the rapture happens first. And so could the Antichrist be alive today? Yes, he very well could be, but he will not be revealed to the world until, again, Revelation chapter 6, he'll come as a false Christ with false peace, okay? And then he'll reveal his true colors halfway through the tribulation period. Um, but Paul says that that man of sin won't be revealed until that time. Mm -hmm.